morning, good morning. Here we are. We are at Blog Talk Radio, and it's Thursday, and that means that it's Thankful Thursday, and that means that I'm here, your host, Dr. Deb Carlin. Listen to that squeaky voice, your host, <laughs> Dr. Deb Carlin with my co-host, Alexandra Nikolai. I always feel so important when I say your name. <laughs> good morning, Alexandra. How are you? Good morning. I am I'm doing wonderful. It's a beautiful day and I'm thankful to be here as well and share some time with you. Yeah, it's great. It's um especially in 2020, isn't it lovely the way that we have this zone that we can come into known as Zoom and also on Blog Talk Radio. And especially because I videotape these and upload them onto YouTube, we get the opportunity to actually sit together have a cuppa, <laughs> whatever your cuppa is, and toast the morning and get in a, you know, just a, a girly visit and talk about what's the what what out here in the world. So I was telling you before we went live about what it was that I did as our write up today. And what I said is Thankful Thursdays with uh, Alexandra Nikolai and Dr. Deb Carlin. Um, we hear about mindset and meditations and being optimistic, but what does that mean? When you feel like you have your back up against the wall, because you know frequently I'm I'm known to be an eternal optimist, and I got to tell you, there are times when it just it almost infuriates me because I think to myself, why 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 am I setting myself up for this? You know, why don't I just say, well then, see, I can't finish the sentence, so I don't, I can't I can't not be an eternal optimist. But seriously, when you feel the despair of 2020, when you feel even okay inside of 2020, the pandemic and the civil unrest and the political bickering and arguing and name calling and then, 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 right? <clears throat> we can almost deal with that. And then something in our business goes, boom, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and something in our, in our personal life just, you know, stinks like rotten old eggs. Yeah. What What do you tell people? I mean, you've got design wellness. What's your design on this, my friend? Yeah, you made a lot of interesting points. Uh, it is, it's, it's a challenging year. And for me, what, when I talk to people through this, and I, or I talk myself through it, I always have to come back to what you said. You may not find yourself to be an eternal optimist, but you can certainly find something to be grateful for. And it, it, it's just, it's, a, it's reframing. It's like, okay, well this ha X, Y, and Z happened, but then so did this. Or as a result of as something negative, something positive came out of it, or did you learn something? I mean, that, that's a positive, you, if you learned, if you're growing. Excellent, I think, I think that that's absolutely spectacular. And you know, <clears throat> I am always looking for ways <laughs> to figure out how can I be of maximal benefit to myself so I can then spill over onto other people. So yeah. as a doctor of psychology, a lot of people think, oh, you're a psychologist. Well, that means that you must be doing um, therapy with people. Well, I had great clinical training, um, particularly at, at Washington University Medical School. I, I I interned and did work in psychiatry and I was in the locked boards and um, I was on research projects and, and as, a, <clears throat> as an undergraduate going into a, a master's PhD program, I wanted to know everything about the human being and the human condition that I possibly could during that seven year program of studying humans and human behavior. And so I went through and studied every form of therapy and, and, and every, every experience of therapy, I, I went through firsthand because I wanted to know about that. I did not have any ambition to be a clinical psychologist. I know great clinical psychologists and psychiatrists, and I will refer people to them when they have issues. What I have found to be is really prevalent is people need a teacher. People need an educator. 
I just happened to come with some pretty nice credentials and training and experience that I think it, it seems are helpful for people because I've packaged it in tools, much like you have for designing wellness. And partners in excellence and build the strength within you and I have got so much beautiful overlap there. Yeah. With trying to train people, you are in control of what you think. Now, when your emotions run away, it's because you've allowed them like an untrained dog without a leash. Right. So we have to grab hold and absolutely invite this region in our skull here to stay contained. <laughs> right. Like, this is your room. Yeah. Play nice in there. Yeah. Quit getting in, into, into, into fisticuffs with me, myself, and I. Right. Right. Yeah, but letting look. yourself go down that, go down the road that you're not supposed to be going down. Bring exactly. It back. Yes. It's a one way road. <laughs> come back, come back, do that turnaround. It's much nicer. So you've got, <clears throat> I think you've got an, a really unique kind of a business and setup. Mine is, is a, across the board on age and both genders and people in business and people in their personal lives. You've got a setup where you've got a lot of women working together. So right. you, got, you got a lot of estrogen <laughs> flying around the room. And how do you keep it so it's lovely? What do you do to keep it lovely? Because you've got, I mean, you've got three different businesses and you've got a lot of, a lot of female energy in there. You're like, right. I think our female energy is great, just the two of us. But I don't know, what is it about women? We have a way of kind of getting to each other. What is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we ask you 32 questions at one time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so no sorry. problem. That's okay. Yeah. My two main businesses are, are both comprised of all females. So uh, I hadn't actually thought of that. I, uh, but that's all I'm doing right now. So that, yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of dynamic. And the way that I lead that and lead them is like I mentioned by example. Um, so I just don't, I don't allow myself to go down the path of cattiness mm. or um, jealousy or in, I'm in competition with anyone. And that's, I think, as you grow, you know, with my, as a coach and, and coaching people. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's not, not a competition. There is enough for everyone. Um, yeah. That brings me back to my abundance mindset. Yeah. That, you know, everyone, there's plenty to go around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I really focus just on building people up and I read the room. You got to read, you got to read the person that's walking in, into your, into your business or in, into your life and, you know, sometimes make an adjustment accordingly so that uh, you can, you can meet them at their level and, and then a friendship builds and, and everyone stays <laughs> right, right. Where yeah. they should, you know, just, it's just even like there's <laughs> no need to escalate and, and, um, and it's back to the learning. I learn about, I, I learn from everyone I come in contact with. And if you go into an, a relationship or a meeting or a friendship or a meet and greet for the very first time, if you go in with that kind of energy, yeah, really good things happen. And, and for, with an energy of, of like, it's thankful Thursdays, being grateful for the opportunity to meet somebody <laughs> new. What can you, what can you like, what can I learn from you today? Yeah, I love that attitude, and I and I love that you pull it back into our show here of Thankful Thursdays. What better way to to start a day, but with a theme, you know? So Thankful Thursdays, I wake up on Thursdays and I think, oh, good, I, you know, I get to spend part of my morning with Alexandra, and and um, I I need to think in the direction of what we're going to do on the show. And so what are all the things that I'm thankful for? So I figure I got 10 fingers. Well, people are, people are going to be literal eight fingers, two thumbs, you know, yeah. but I start ticking off the things that I'm thankful for. So, you know, like I got a full head of hair. Great. Thankful for that. I can see thankful for that. I can smell, I can feel I'm moving around. I can hear, you know, I'm hearing things from my window. Um, 
I, I, I can come up with the idea of coffee. <laughs> yes. I'm thankful that I've got a great home that I live in. I'm thankful that I've got uh, food and beverage in my kitchen. I'm thankful that I've got power because I think about our friends who are out in California where a million acres has burned in raging forest fires started by a lightning strike. Oh, dear heaven. Yeah. And, and so I love that you said all that. You know, the idea, it's interesting. Um, I used to write a column for the St. Louis Business Journal. And it was really fun. And Ellen Sherberg was the editor over there. And I, and I was working with uh, a PR person, Peggy Lentz, who was a good friend of mine. And so the three of us had a nice dynamic about us. It was never competitive. It was never icky. It would, I mean, it was three women who are really strong, doing different things. And, and I'm writing this column and, and Peggy's, you know, helping me with my perspective and verbiage and being a professional and making me a little, a little less long winded, <laughs> you know, keeping it tight. Not that I could possibly be long winded. No, no, no. <laughs> and then I, I told her I was just exuberant, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, but I, I wasn't entitled to the whole issue. Um, and then, and then with Ellen wanting to make sure that, you know, I was received well and that her readership was happy with everything. And I remember just loving those women and loving that opportunity. Now we all went on to go do additional more things. Peggy's still doing her business of Lentz and Associates PR, but um, Ellen took over a more national presence with the, with the business journal. And, and I moved on to do some other things and it's just fascinating how the dynamic always worked. But, but we walked in, just like you said, when you walk in clean and fresh and excited about what can I learn from these people? And by the way, you know, how can I be of service? Yes. It changes everything. Everything. So let me ask you this. So on the, on the opposite, you know, do we, if we have some listeners or uh, people going through a situation that isn't that yeah what would you tell them where if they're they're in a a relationship friendship work environment something that's that's there's some tension or there, things aren't aren't clicking what would what would you what would you tell them um well my first inclination is to be funny in response to you and say so you mean if it's cock a doodle do <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is, <clears throat> yes, if there's a little cockadoodle do going on. What do you, what do you do? <laughs> I love that. I'm going to say that next time when I, I spend some tension in the room. I, I, I'm feeling a little cockadoodle do going on here. <laughs> See, it works. And I'm telling you, I have done that. I mean, I've done that literally, I've done that in boardrooms, you know? The very first thing that we have to remember, truly, is that no matter what's going on, if we insert just a modicum of levity into it, we're going to change the energy like boom. I mean, there really is frequency out here in the world and in the universe. And when we're dialed into what's really negative, you know, we can actually measure one another's frequencies. Yeah. And when you're at the low end of the spectrum, you're miserable. When you're at the high end of the spectrum, you're awesome. You're happy. Your energy is clean and people are drawn to you, you know, yeah. and they're drawn to you in a happy way, not in a, Oh, I better, I better gravitate toward that person. So they don't come after me. You know, I better befriend that person because I'm afraid of them. Well, that's a terrible motivator. That's a terrible connector. So when, when people come to me and by the way, I have to tell you, I love my career, but people don't come to me and say, Hey, Deb, or hey, Dr. Deb, or Dr. Carlin, hey, we want you to come into our company because things are so spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> we want you to tell us how great we are or help us go from, you know, really great to exquisite. People contact me because they're stressed. My expertise is in stress and in mindset, really, truly. What are you doing inside of your mind? How do you deal with brain science? 
how do we deal with these relationships where people are colliding with each other? So mm-hmm. one of the things that I do is I, 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 uh, I ask whoever it is who's come to me with an issue on the phone or on the Zoom. It always starts out that way first, not with me making a, a, a direct visit in person. And I, and I listen. Okay, so what, what do you have going on? And as I'm listening, I listen for their cadence, mm. their tone, mm-hmm. the selection of words. I listen because all that is going to tell me about the emotionality and the pattern of their thinking. And then I will say, okay, I don't know. You've heard this. I don't want to interrupt, but I'm going to put you on pause for a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then, and then I'll, I'll say, so what did you mean by this, this and that? And, and by this, did you mean that you were stuck here and in that stuckedness, what about this and that? And then it's like we're driving in a car together, side by side, and it doesn't it doesn't mean that one of us is the driver and one of us is the passenger. It means that we're in this vehicle, but we're negotiating together where it is we're going to go. It's almost like the steering wheel passes between us, you know? Or, or they're driving and I say, well, how about if we make a little right hand turn over here? You know, how, how about if we, oh, look at that road over there. Now, doesn't that look inviting? How yeah. about if we pull over? Because what happens when we get so frustrated with somebody, we really focus in on them. And it's, and, and it is a, a friend of mine, when I was in my twenties, um, I met in Chicago and, and, and uh, he was from Memphis. Mm. <laughs> and he would say it just like that. So where are you from, Bob? Memphis. Okay. <laughs> you mean Memphis? No, I said Memphis. Okay. Yeah. And he was this big, tall guy, like six foot four. And he was married to my best friend at the time. And he would say, Deborah, you got some glue in your head and you are stuck. Mm. Need a little, you need a little grease in there. We, get mm. you, we need to get you a little greased up and, and get your mind lubricated and just go, just go with it. You know, that's true. I mean, he, he, isn't that a great, really kind of funny? Yeah. Um, but we do, we get, we get really stuck. So when people are talking about mindset, what, it, what we're really talking about is a pattern of thinking where you get, you know, your fists are, are tight you're dedicated to what you are seeing and experiencing. And here's the biggest thing of all, Alexandra, you believe it's the truth. Yes. Well, no, it's not. (laughs) The truth is it's your perspective. And it's interesting how the truth shifts according to your perspective and what you allow. So, Let's say we're, we're dealing with somebody who is just so irritable. Mm. They're, they're, they're condescending to people. They're rude. They're, they're insensitive. Okay. What do we do with that? Right. What, if what we do is we collide with it, then it's just going to be one battle after the next. Yeah. If we can pull back, and, and, and see, okay, is there something, let's look at who they're this way with. If we can look at this and ask ourselves the question, okay, what am I thankful for in this moment, in this situation? What am I thankful for? Well, I'm thankful that I have patience because I'm going to sit and study this. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for my ability to listen and to articulate some helpful ideas. Now, when you feel like you've got your back up against the wall in that situation, you really do have to listen and you really do have to watch. And then there are times when, when just that act alone will soften a person because they realize 
wow, this person is dialing into me. And the reason I've been so irritable and so um, crabby and crass with everybody is because I'm just having a tough time. I feel really insecure. I'm terrified about the virus. I'm, I'm terrified of the violence in the cities. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid about the future. And then they soften and they come towards you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and in that opportunity, with your back up against the wall, you sort of have an opportunity to be protective of your backside and just stand back far enough to be able to witness how they move. Now, some people will do exactly what I just said and described. And other people, just that glue in their head, they are not about to let that grease slide in there, you know, at all. So what do you do? Well, do you think they're, do you feel like that? I feel like that would happen, you know, because they, the state that they're allowing themselves to be in feels safe. There you, you go. Would you think that's brilliant insight? Yes. And why would they do that? Why would they do that? Why would they think that that would be their safety zone? Well, I don't know. You can tell me, but maybe they've been there for that long for so long. Yeah. They don't remember. They don't remember an alternative or, or can't think of an alternative, like you said, because the glue is, is stuck in there. Yeah. I think those are brilliant answers, great insights. And, and aren't we thankful that we have the ability to think this through and time dedicated to talk about it? Because we have, we have a listening audience that is experiencing human behavior. We all do. And by the way, we all get stuck. So in addition to that, yeah, it becomes a habit for people. How many times mm. do we, how many times do we hear somebody say, well, this is just me. Yes. This is just who I am. This is how I am. What are you talking about? <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. Well, what we're talking about is you're kind of a problem. So we let, how about if we talk about it and try to figure it out? Why, why don't you tell me what's really bothering you? Oh, wall comes oh, up. Yes. Yep. Okay. So then we call that defensiveness. Okay. Guess what? Defensiveness is, is a coping mechanism. There's a variety of coping mechanisms, denial, defensiveness, you know, all, all kinds of things that we do as human beings to protect our psyche. Cause we don't want to get uncomfortable. So I'll tell you what, if I've been hurt in the past and I don't trust people very much, or you remind me of somebody who's hurt me in the past, or this arrangement reminds me of something that hurt me in the past. Yes. I'm, you know, I am going to behave this way. I'm not going to get vulnerable. I'm going to hurt you and protect myself so you don't come after me and hurt me first. Yeah. How's that sound? That sounds, that's brilliant. And that's, you know, I've been encountering some different relationships, um, work and family and all, all dynamic dynamics, you know, and I know so much of this is coming to light with the uncertainty and, but that's, that's a, that's a pattern definitely in, in some romantic relationships that I've, I've been in. And Very I'm tough. sure there's a lot of listeners that can relate. And so that's where, you know, with this, what we're talking about today with this mindset and being mindful of that and being able to yeah. protect yourself. You're like, uh-oh, no, no. I'm not going to go down that road again. We're turn it around <laughs> on the wrong, on the, on the one way road, going the wrong way. Let's bring it, bring it back. I don't want to do that to myself anymore. I don't want to do that to another person. I want to, I want to be healthy, but that's also that's So that's self self-awareness in yourself, but then also being able to recognize and having maybe some compassion and empathy for what's going on in somebody else's life and why, why they're in that place. And I think once you're there, then as you said, that energy shift where then they maybe can get to a place where they feel safe to be a little more vulnerable and, and recognize, okay, yeah, I, I don't want to go down that path either. Right. I want to want to go back. I want to be back to the healthy with everything in the brain lubed up and <laughs> and and happy and grateful and because you just that's right. Who who wakes up and says I want to be miserable all day? You know, 
Yeah. You know what? I'm so glad that you said exactly that. People don't, but they wake up that way. And it's like, ah, oh, crap. It's another day. Ah, oh, shoot. Yeah. And, and then here's the list of things I got to do. Do you remember that movie Blazing Saddle? Bla Blazing Saddles, a comedy, and Madeline Kahn was in it, and she and she sang. She was she was um she was the star in the saloons. It was an old old western comedy. I, Mel Brooks, I think, put it together. Mm -hmm. And so she's on the stage, and and you know she's this really sexy entertainer, and and she's singing. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> And and she goes off on this, you know. But I, the 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 part of it that runs through my mind is this: I'm so tired, yeah. and and it's funny the way that she does it, and 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 she makes it something about. It. I mean, I'm not going to get the words right here, you know, of of this and that, and this and that. And she's listing these things. If you wake up like that, and you don't catch yourself, like boom, then you are going to have a really icky day. You just yeah. are because yes. the, the, you know, you're setting it in motion, right? Like, why do we have coffee? Why do we have coffee? We have coffee to give us a little bit of caffeine to go, Ooh, I'm up. I got a little boost there. And by the way, it was delicious and it smelled good. And now I feel better or tea or, or whatever, but you got to do something so that when you wake up, wake up in gratitude and then, and then yeah. take it from there. Right? So Here's the thing, when, when you were talking about intimate relationships, you know, romantic relationships, the more, you know, people wonder why are we suffering with these romantic relationships? What's wrong with everybody? Okay, well, what's wrong is that we've got a whole world of people that we can choose from, so we don't really have to put up with much with, from anybody in particular. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm sick of you. <laughs> There's all these other people out here in the world. It's not like the old Wild West when, you know, there was like the sheriff or his deputy. Yeah. <laughs> all the other people were, you know. So, yeah. so today we have too much, we have too much that we can select from and it gets confusing. It's like going to a buffet restaurant. Well, I don't know anybody who, who me, me included, who doesn't make a pig out of themselves at the buffet restaurant. I'll take a little bit of that and a little bit of that. And then you walk back to your table and you got like a big pile, you know, like a big tall pile of food on your plate. So that's one thing. The, the other thing is, though, the closer we get to one another, the more that we reveal to one another, the more we depend on one another, the more that we count on one another, the more vulnerable we are. So it's like, here I am. I'm, I'm fully clothed. We go to lunch. We go to dinner. We go do things. We start talking. We trade some secrets. We trade some insecurities because we want to see where our hearts really meet. We've covered a lot of intellectual ground. Okay, that's good. We're drawn to one another. We hold hands. We hug. We kiss. We become physically intimate at some point. And there's a huge range on what that means. So do your own interpretation. But when we're naked with somebody, that's why I always advise people, don't get physically intimate too early. Because when you're physically naked, intellectually naked, and emotionally naked, it's a setup. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a setup for either a great, beautiful, safe, secure relationship or you're going to start going what are you looking what now what, what was that about what are you looking at what are you looking at my thighs <laughs> you know what, yeah literally and figurative yeah yeah this, yeah, this exactly. is a great analogy yeah you know well wait a second what was that crack about are you saying are you inferring i'm stupid i mean mm -hmm. so we do all these things with our defenses again okay and, and what happens is the more vulnerable we feel, the more naked we feel, the more we have territory to protect. When you're totally exposed, you're totally exposed. So let me tell you a couple tricks I do. This is, you'll love this. So I'm, I'm out to dinner with this guy and we kind of date each other. You know, it's like, it's a, sort of like a nothing thing. You know, we've known each other our whole lives and, we see each other maybe once a week or something. 
and <laughs> and we're at dinner. <clears throat> Everything's lovely. We're talking. We're having a nice time. And all of a sudden, it comes to a point where there's just this collide. And there's this argument coming at me across the table, like an accusation. And I'm, and I'm saying, or not, you know. Oh, what about, maybe you're like this, or not. And it was, it was only going to escalate. So yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. This is insane. We're at this nice meal. So I picked up my wine glass. I'll do it with my water glass. I picked up my wine glass and I said, cheers to a lovely evening. <laughs> and he couldn't resist. Complete energy change. Yeah. Complete. Awesome. Awesome. Because, you know, as my parents always told me, one of the two of you, whoever that dynamic is, there has to be somebody in the encounter who's going to rise above it. And, cha and really, literally, what I'm talking about, change the frequency of it. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I know you and I have had really great conversations on frequency and I, I, I use the word vibration. You got to raise your vibration, yeah. yep. operate at a higher vibration. And I wasn't expecting we were going to go down romantic relationship road today, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I love talking about that. And, and I've coached a lot of people on the very same thing with the physical part of a relationship. Yeah. I have friends that that happened earlier and, and they're happily married. And, but more times than not, I've, I've found that that, can be a little bit of a recipe. And I, in my wor world and the way I coach, I just say, I, you know, I think the physical connection is the easiest one. Yes, it is. That's so, right. So then, then it blurs your, your, your brain because you haven't taken time for the emotional and the, and the intellectual and the spiritual connection, which are very important and are much harder to deepen, especially the emotional one. Yeah. And so then if the physical happens, then in your mind, you've, you've got this great connection with somebody that you really don't because the physical is so easy. And so I've, I've really been working on that with myself even and with clients, just uh, deepening my emotional connection and spiritual and intellectual connection um, before anything else and seeing if, if, there, if I can lay the groundwork or if there's substance to, to that before moving on. So that's been that's been something that I've learned over the last few years. That's been quite insightful for me. And, um, yeah, so. All right. Let me, let me take this a step further in terms of when you have your back up against the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> in terms of gratitude and thankfulness, mm -hmm. I am so thankful that we have so much that we know about mind body medicine because mind body medicine is what's at the core of wellness and, and, and well-being. Uh, what I call, uh, the term I coined is authentic, holistic well-being. Yes. Now, if we're going to enjoy wellness, <clears throat> it's no holds barred. There's nothing that's off limits, no part of our life, no topic, no area of living that is off limits. You know, it's, it's everything from the cleanliness of your body to your house, to your car, to your workspace. It's yes. your financial relationship with yourself. <clears throat> How you think and feel about money, lack thereof and abundance of it. Your, your nutrition, how you look at food and feel yourself or just satisfy your mouth. How you move your body, you, what your exercise and movement routine is, how flexible you are, how comfortable you are, what you think, what you feel. Relationships, faith. <clears throat> how you use your brain, how you understand your brain. You know, all of those things are, are essential for us, right? I am so thankful that we have science about every bit of that because we can teach ourselves, we can learn from experts, we can teach one another and share that. We do so much damage with just our verbiage. Yes. You know, we we um we forget you know people will say sometimes why are you so nice why are you saying it like i have cooties right because it's not trustable really mm -hmm. that's really sad yeah now 
kindness. This is the K factor where K equals kindness. And the factors are all the things that lead to it. You know, the, the factors are here, the kindest thing that I could think to do is to make Thursday a day of thankfulness and invite in someone who is beautiful. That would be you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. And then for us to have this exchange of, of kindness and consideration and welcomeness and, and have people dial in here yeah, and see the exchange. I mean, we get a little animated, you know, a couple times we got so excited. We were kind of talking at the same time and, and it was sweet because we both deferred them to one another. And we weren't trying to over, over talk one another. We just are so excited about what we're saying. And we're here to be helpful to people. Right. But how many people, Alexandra, are not encountering that in their world? Unfortunately, more than, probably more than we know. And that is sad. And so I'm, I am thankful that you created this show. We have this opportunity on Thursdays to come in, like you said, have a genuine conversation about things that we're genuinely thankful for. Mm -hmm. In the hopes, I mean, for me, it's the hope that even if it's, we touch one person who needed to hear the message today and it, it can turn around their day or their life. I mean, I, I know we're touching more than that, but it, it's worth it to me if it's just even one person and um, who has, feels like they have their back up against the wall and what needs needs to know the path on on getting out of that and so it's it's been really it's been really great to be here uh, and share and uh, in genuine gratitude for for the opportunities that we have and the the ability to get on this show and, <laughs> and talk to people i mean it's <clears throat> the worldwide network <laughs> i know the craziness of it right on the World Wide Web. But, you know, it, I, I love that you said that. That's so dear. And it's, it's so mutual. And, and, you know, one of the things that, like, if people are sitting there saying, you know, some people are going to go, oh, I think I'm going to just get, you know, go into a, a sugar overload here with all the sweetness. Well, guess what? We all crave sugar. Yeah. We all crave sweetness. And I don't know anybody who isn't missing the physical contact that we're used to having with one another. I mean, I'm used to hugging people throughout the day. Yeah. You know, and in, and enjoying that, that touch ability. And we're, we, we are all suffering so many consequences to this world that we're living in right now. Right. Do you know, I think it's the 15th of this month. Uh, there's a movement on social media that it's a take off your mask day. We refuse to wear the mask. We're going to be free. And I'm thinking, you know, people are getting sick of it. There's a, there's a lot of ways to deal with this. I mean, when did we, when did we, and I, and this isn't tangential, this is to, totally connected to this masking thing. When did we, as a culture of human beings, a lot of us raised on good manners and etiquette and the practices of social grace. When did we think that it was okay to come out in public with a fever, with the flu, coughing and hacking and sneezing all over everybody and then rubbing our nose, <laughs> wiping our hand on God only knows what? You know, I mean, when I see somebody coughing into their hand and they want to shake my hand, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you got cooties now, so you, you yeah. need to, we don't need to shake hands. Yeah, you know, or so you, you know, you show up at a meeting and, and you say to people, "Hi, how are you? It's good to see you." Oh, I feel terrible. I have the flu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are you serious? Go home. I can't. I gotta work. Okay. No, go home. Now okay. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm making fun of people. I have to. I have to look in the mirror because I've been known to do that too. It's like I don't feel good, but I gotta get out there. No, you don't have to get out there. But for us to be on lockdown and be told, you have to wear a mask, you have to do this, you have to stay away from everybody. I don't want to stay away from everybody. Yeah. How about if we don't feel good, if we feel punky, we just retreat for a while until we feel better? Yeah. 
I agree. I, I hope we I hope we get back to that place that the trust is there that we, you know, if you don't feel good, you can stay home and, and, and we're, we can make that decision for ourselves. Right. Um, and back to your other point about, you know, everyone thinking maybe the sugar overload and, and the sweetness. Yeah. What listeners, you know, need to understand too is, is that, yeah, we're having a great genuine conversation and, and sweet, whatever, um, gratitude and things, but we're able to speak on that because we've been in a place where that hasn't always been the case in our own lives. And I, I'm not going to speak that into your life, but I, I, I've certainly had my struggles and I've had my, my mind has taken over and take, taken me down the, the wrong road oh, yeah. on the runway street and I'm going the, the wrong way and, and how to bring it back. And, and that's why I think partly why we're here to encourage people too, because we've been, we've been in places we didn't like and, and moved away from them. And, and so that's possible for others too. So, mm-hmm. you know, cause Nobody wants to be coached by somebody that has had all rose petals <laughs> their whole yep. life. Yep. I certainly have not. Yes, and and neither have I. And I and I and I have had people um, tell me, well, you know, like, what would you possibly know? You know, you've grown up in a great family with a lot of privilege. You know, you mean you're so lucky that you're a doctor. Oh, really? Well, because that had a lot to do with it, right? Yeah. Nobody paid my way. I worked my way through my education. I was a stubborn, really rebellious teenager. And I walked away from <clears throat> the financial gifts that my parents offered me mm. to go to college and all that. And so I made the path very difficult for myself because I wanted, as the, as the baby of the family, I wanted to show everybody as a big girl. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know how to make life happen. The first place I, the first apartment that I had was a, um, a, a sublease from a guy who didn't have the right to sublease it. <laughs> oh my, okay. <laughs> it was underage with an underage girlfriend. And I mean, we were kids, man. We were, I mean, we rented this place before we were done with high school and I didn't tell my parents and, and she didn't, she actually didn't really have parents. She lived in a, in a, in a facility for kids who, not an orphanage, but something like that, mm-hmm. which by the way, we need those again. We need them in a big way because kids need a place where they're taken care of. Anyway, we were so naive to the point of stupidity that when the electric didn't work anymore, I said, it's broken. What's <laughs> going on here? It's broken. And the phone doesn't work. And we didn't have any idea. Like, well, Why? So we went to the pay phone across the street or wherever, because there were no cell phones back then. And I remember calling the electric company and I said, excuse me, do you know who this is? Uh, no. Do you have an account number? An account number? You know, my father has been a customer for a long time. And I don't think he'd be very happy if he knew that you weren't taking care of his daughter. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I mean, the arrogance and the stupidity and the naivete. I don't know which one, which one comes into first position there, you know? And, and they, and they said, well, first of all, we can't tell you anything on the account because your name's not on it, but there's a bill outstanding. There's like a bill. That was a rough lesson. I mean, that was just, that was just heinous. That was terrible. (laughs) And we really didn't have a clue what we were doing. And I had no idea how big the world is out here. Yeah. It is huge. There's a, there's a lot to navigate. So when we're comfortable in our homes and we're working really hard to pay our bills and to, and to be credible and to be contributing members of society, that doesn't come easy. That's not luck. We all work hard for that. But there are so many people out here, Alexandra, who, you know, they don't, they don't have the guiding light. They don't, you know, I could, I could go back to my parents and, and hang, hang my head in shame and embarrassment. I need help, but, you know, I really was an idiot here. Um, I had to work my way back into my folks. Yeah. You know, they, they were not necessarily very pleased with my behaviors and my cavalier attitude. And I've, I have not been able to ever be cavalier again. I don't feel cavalier about anything. I 
I feel really, truly thankful, really, yeah. truly thankful, thankful that I've got what I've got and, and working always to be honoring of that. Right. Yeah. So when you have people who come into your studio, they're coming in for such beautiful reasons. They, they really pure bar. I love, I love the whole image of it and what you do in there. It's so graceful. Yeah. Isn't it? That's really hard. This, the workout's really hard, but it, it's a, it's a good, it's a good hard. It's a good challenge. Um, challenges the mind, challenges the body. Yeah. It's, it's, it's your, your 50 minutes of, of me time. And, um, it's, it's, I'm very grateful and very blessed that I have that opportunity to, to bring that into people's lives. That's, and I'm very blessed that I am able to be open in this, this time. Mm -hmm. And cause there's a lot of people still struggling. And so that's, cause they're not open and, and that's, that's challenging. We, you know, we, we need to get back on track here and, um, yeah, you've got two studio locations that, that you're protective of. And, and in the meantime, you've been trying to figure out how to service people so that there's online resources that they can okay. participate in so that they can stay connected. And, you know, I think, I think being thankful for all those members that you've got. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, huge gratitude. Yes. for that because those are people who you know think about all of us out here who are supporting whoever it is that we're supporting organizations individuals that we really have faith in that we you know we know that we're all struggling so let's let's share in this and yeah. provide as much as we possibly can because of the goodness factor this is so good right yeah yeah a hundred percent. Yeah. And I, I try to go about that approach, um, in my own life too. I'm, I'm tremendously grateful for my clients that have stayed and, and yeah, we're trying to just keep increasing the value. So, you know, the ones that are, that are still at home and, and not ready to, to come back have still have the ability to participate. And <coughs> I know they're really grateful for that too. And, and I just continue to support as many of my friends, small businesses, things that I, that I, that I can as well. So just trying to share, share the love, I guess, as, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, it's the truth. Yeah. Cause you know, what else right now there's not, there's, there, there isn't, um, a lot of other choices I think than that. And I think just trying to live in love and gratitude right now um, because it, otherwise it's hard. You know, you can get, there's a lot of people out there that are really lonely. It makes me sad. I was lonely. It's why I came to Black Talk Radio. <laughs> and I invited a friend on for every day of the week. I mean, most days I'm doing, yeah, every day I do two episodes, two shows a day. And on some days I do three and I want to do three, five days a week. And then on the weekends, I do a Saturday, uh, some of the time with a, my friend Joy Martina, and sometimes by myself. And then on Sunday, it's Soulful Sunday, and I, and I do that by myself. But the other days of the week, man, <laughs> I and want company. Great, yeah, you have some great co-hosts. <laughs> so you, you've got your shows, your lineup is fantastic. Oh. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm, I'm talking about the rest of you your week. So you've, you've got, and that's wonderful. And, uh, like, yeah, people sitting at home, I, that's what I, that's a great, it's a great thought or piece of advice. If you're sitting at home and you're lonely, jump on a zoom with somebody or jump on blog talk radio and come and hang out right. and get a little, get a little connection, get a little human connection to start your day. That's right. Um, come, come to the Dr. Deborah Carlin YouTube channel and you will find all the episodes. So you got that and you, and you've gotten the link. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go in there and it's like so much fun. I mean, I, I actually, I think this is really funny. I go back and I watch the episodes that I was in with my yeah. friend that is the co-host 
And I, and I think to myself, this is so much fun. Yes. And, you know, there's always surprises. Like yesterday, I do a daily show Monday through Friday with a good friend, Ron Williams. And he is just, he's so, he is just an incredible person. You've been on the phone with him. I have. Yeah. He's very yeah. dynamic, really fun to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's great. And he's this really, um, you know, busy man and, and we all are. Well, yesterday we, I never know where he's going to be. I mean, I'm, I'm always here, you know, I've got to be the stable one for my guest. So I'm always in my office for the shows and, um, he sometimes will be in his vehicle. And, and yesterday he was in his vehicle and I said, Oh, you have somebody in the back seat there. And it was one of his kids. He's got five kids. So it was a daughter. And, and I said, I said, well, that's charming. We need to bring her in. Mm -hmm. So we pulled her into the episode and we heard mm -hmm. from her and it was marvelous. And, and he had a, he had a mask hanging from his rear view mirror. And I said, are you trying to show off that you're compliant? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, Oh, I'm sorry. It's in the way. And it was just, you know, it was playful. Yeah. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Cause we had, we had a, a grown child, but a kiddo on the air with us. And we heard some things from her and she's this incredible young lady. And so you never know what you're going to encounter. We have one episode with him where one of his little kids, I mean, really little kid might be, I don't know, He's in grade school for sure in the primary grades. He comes in and he goes behind his dad and he pretends he's the shark, you know, but you just see this hand come behind his dad's chair. <laughs> it I is, love it. It's darling. It's fun. So when you come on to these episodes, you never know what you're going to encounter. Yeah. You know, the, the surprise of it, but whatever like people it. Yeah, are, puts a smile on my face. Good. It's fun. It's, that, it, it, that's what people need. Yes. How many places are people dialing in where there's nothing mean, there's no prank, there's nothing evil, it, you know, it, it's not critical of any one, it's concern for all, harm to none. Yes. Our, our position is, I mean, really, peace, love, and groovy. Yeah. What a way to start your day. How can, you know, how can you... <clears throat> And that's what we talked about earlier in the show. Figure out a way to start your day on the positive, on the right foot. Um, if you wake up and, and you're not there, shake it off. I, this morning I woke up, you know, I was feeling a little, a little off, as I told you right before the show. I was like, yeah. oh, you know, I, I said, I got to get, I got to get moving, get in motion is what I call it. Get in motion. Yeah. To get on the show, have good energy. And so I, <clears throat> I have a rebounder. So I, which is like a, a fancy word for a mini trampoline. Oh, okay. So I just, I'm like, I'm just going to go get on my rebounder for a little bit. I learned that from, <clears throat> from Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Uh, yeah. So he has rebounders at uh, some of his events. And you, if you get in the funk, you just go start bouncing. I'm oh yeah. Sure. Right. So I, I just bounced a little on my trampoline and I'm like, I'm going to shake it off and <laughs> go. And, but like I said, I got to listen to some of the, your, your, shows with Ron, as you, you and I know, that's, that's the business that you and I are in and, and Ron's part of that as well. And that's such it's so much excitement. I know coming out of, of things he's working on. So I'm sure that that's great. So, it is. It's spectacular. As a matter of fact, the skin, the skin elixir. Yes. We have got so much to share with people. Um, and one of the things that Alexandra and I are talking about in the last few minutes here is a, a company that we've invested in that we get DNA samples through mouth swabs uh, and you, we package them right while you're there and send them off to our laboratory and we create a nutraceutical, our company creates a nutraceutical for you that is customized to your DNA to who you are. And so you get a nutritional food, a nutritional supplement that is only for you. And, and if, and if you want to know more about this, you know, you don't have to take any other supplements. This is it. So if you've got a cabinet full of stuff that you've hand selected and you think, you know what you're doing, I got another thing coming for you. 
yeah. called Blind Nutrition. I know as a nutritionist from years ago. Yeah. 40 years ago, I became a nutritionist, so I know of what I speak. All right, so listen, darling Alexandra Nikolai, we've come <laughs> to the end of yet another episode here on Blog Talk Radio, The K Factor. Thank you so much for being on the show with me. It's such a delight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I look forward to it. The highlight of my Thursday. Great. I'll be back next Thursday. And Excellent. All right, friends. This is your host, Dr. Deb Carlin, signing out for me and Alexandra. Alexandra, stick around for a minute. I'm going to turn us off. We'll say peace out. Everybody have a great day and bless you for being here with us. Yes. <laughs>